All right, so this is going to go over pages 15 through 17, your projectiles packet. So we're going to start on page 15. So the time for a type 2 and only type 2. So key thing is here is please don't get this mixed up with type 1. So remember, type 1 was the whole rolling off a cliff or a building. Okay, we cannot use that for this. Uh, we cannot use this for type 1. Okay, so if we launch a type 2 projectile, which looks like this. Okay. We're going to give you an equation that says our time. Okay, so it's called T total. Okay, so it's just the total time it's in the air from start to finish. Is where you're going to take your VYI and divide it by 4.9. So remember that VYI is when we actually do our triangle. So our triangle looks like this. Our launch angle, we have our V given. So remember VYI is when we use that sign to find that. So which we're going to do a lot more calculations in this video. So all you got to do is you want to find the total time is take that VYI and divide it by 4.9. And again, we'll give you this equation so you don't have to worry about trying to memorize that. Now, another thing I could ask is how long would it take to get to the top? Okay, well, if I know that that is the whole time, the top is half of that total time. Okay, so if you want to find the time to the top, okay, you're going to take that VYI divided by 4.9, get that answer and just divide it by 2. Okay, so that's all you got to do is figure out how long it takes to get to the top. Now, things to remember about type 2 projectiles, the signs in the equation are vital because they account for motions in different directions, which means positive means you're going up, negative means you're going down. So signs do matter. The max height occurs at half the total time, which we just talked about right there. Okay, at the max height, vertical velocity changes from positive to negative. That means when you're going up, then you stop, and then you come back down. So that means you go from positive to a negative. Now, maximum range, that means maximum horizontal distance. This is what you need to know is that the best angle for distance is 45 degrees. Okay, it's not too high, it's not too low, it's right in the middle between 0 and 90. So if you want to go for max distance, 45 degrees would be your best bet. Now, as far as graphs go, okay, so I'm not going to ask you really to draw any graphs, but we're going to talk about position versus time. So we're going to talk about a position versus time. Okay, so... On this one, it looks exactly like the trajectory. Okay, so position versus time literally looks like a type 2 projectile because you're showing me the position at a certain time. Okay, so nothing too crazy there. So V. now what we're going to do is we're going to do Vx over time. Okay, so remember we said that velo horizontal velocity does not change. Okay, so that means this thing is going to stay constant the entire time. So it's on a V versus T graph or a Vx versus T graph. It's just going to stay a horizontal line. Okay, and remember this little line in the middle, that's your zero line. Now, your AY, okay, that is your vertical acceleration. And remember, that is always going to stay at negative 9.8. So that doesn't change either. Okay, so those graphs, those three graphs are pretty simple. It's usually when we get to this V versus T graph where that kind of causes some problems, okay, where it's VY over T. Now, when you're kicking something, so let's look up here at your, at your projectile. So... When you're kicking something right here, you have max velocity, and it is going up, okay? So that means you're starting at a positive velocity on your VY versus T graph. Now what happens is, is when that object starts to go up, okay, so as it starts going towards the top, your velocity is going to start decreasing. So remember, on this V versus T graph, zero is the x-axis. So it's actually going to go start going towards zero, okay? And then when it hits that line, that means it stopped. So when it stops, that means that on your position versus time graph, that means you hit your max height. So that's like saying this point right here would be zero on a VY, VY versus T graph. So on a position versus time graph, once you hit that top part and you stop, now you're going to start coming back down in the negative direction and you're speeding up. So remember on this VY versus T graph, anything above the x-axis is positive, anything below is a negative. So that means it's going to keep going now, and it's going to start speeding up in the negative direction. So again, that graph is usually the most commonly missed one. Okay, you got to understand that you start with a positive velocity, you start going towards zero, okay, then you stop when you hit the x-axis, and then you start speeding up in the opposite way. That's why you go start going away from zero in the negative direction. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to start doing some calculations on the next page. Now this page right here is pretty much your blueprint on how to solve this stuff. Okay, so if I were to know a page, it would definitely be this. OK, 
Okay, so we're gonna start off finding our velocity. We have a projectile that is shot with a velocity of 500 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of draw it out. Okay, again, we're not gonna really grade you on drawing because they're all gonna look the same. So you have 30 degrees is your angle and you have your hypotenuse is 500 meters per second. Anytime I give you a value with an angle, those go together because that is the angle that it's being shot. Okay, so what we're gonna do is part A and part B, we're gonna do those first. I wanna figure out what is my VX and what is my VY, my VYI specifically. Okay, that little I right there just means initial. That means that is your initial velocity when it leaves whatever device is being shot from. Okay, that's usually when it's gonna be the highest because as it starts going up, it's gonna start changing. Okay, so the reason why we have an I, because that means initial, because it's changing, so it's gonna eventually go to an F for final. Okay, so we're just gonna add that VI on there. You do not need an actual initial horizontal velocity because horizontal velocity doesn't change. So you, you can put VXI if you want to, okay, but it's just gonna be VX the entire time. The entire time. It's not gonna change. So part A, we're gonna find VX. So VX, remember that is your adjacent side. Okay, we have our hypotenuse, which is 500. We have our angle. We're looking for our adjacent, so that's going to be cosine. Okay, so Vx equals 500 times cosine of 30. Just make sure you're in degree mode. So just multiply those, and you get 433.01 meters per second. So that is your answer for part A. Okay, so anytime I ask for horizontal velocity, you're going to do the exact same step every single time. It's always hypotenuse times cosine of your angle. And then part B, VYI, that's gonna be your opposite side of the triangle. So instead of cosine, we're just gonna use sine. So VYI equals 500 times sine of 30. Okay, and that's gonna come out to be 250 meters per second. So don't be afraid if you get a whole number, that does occasionally happen. Okay, so not everything has to be decimals. Okay, so we just solved part A and part B right there. So here's my hint is that once you've broken that 500 up into pieces, you will never use this 500 again. You will only use VX or VYI. It just depends on what we're asking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip over to part C because I think I need to rearrange these anyway. We're going to go ahead and find time. So we're going to skip and go right to D, okay, because I always do these three every single time, no matter the problem. Okay, so time it takes to return to the ground. That means total time. So remember we gave you that equation, T total equals VYI divided by 4.9. Okay, so VYI, we already know. Okay, just make sure you're using the right velocity. That's 250 divided by 4.9. And you're going to get a time of 51.02 seconds. So that is the time it takes from launch to when it comes back to the ground. So we solve D right there. So again, those three things are what I do every single time. Okay, so you just kind of need to get in that habit. Then part E, it says find the time it takes to reach the maximum height. Well, if I know this is the total time, if I want to find the time it takes to get to the top, just split it in two. Okay, so I'm going to take that 51.02, divide it by two, and you're going to get 25.51 seconds. So that is how long it takes to get to the top of that. So we've done E. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back to C. Now we've, we've got our times. We have our VX. We have our VI, VYI. Now we can start solving for things like height and range. So we're going to go back to C. Now, maximum height, anything vertical. Remember, anything vertical, you need to set up Daffy T. Okay, so just be careful in how you're starting to plug things in. So maximum height, that means you're looking for distance. A is still negative 9.8. Okay, be careful with this now, because remember in type one, VI was zero, but now in type two means VF is zero, because you're launching something up and it has to stop at the max height. Now VI, so make sure you're using the right VI. Now I'm talking about vertical, so going up and down. So I'm gonna use that 250, because that was my VYI. Okay, and then time we're gonna leave off. Now on this one, technically, could you use time? Yeah because you do know time right here it takes to get to the top. Okay, the reason why I usually don't recommend time is because sometimes people will use that 51.02 and forget to use the 25.51. Okay, so there's an error there that can occur. 
Now, could you use the 25.5 one? Yeah. So you could just plug it in right here for time and then just leave off VI and you just use equation four. Either way, you're going to get the same answer, but that's kind of up to you on what you want to do. So what I usually do is instead of worrying about that error for time, making sure you're using the right one, I just use the VI that I found in part B. Okay, so that means I do not care about equation number five, which is the VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. So we're going to plug in. So zero equals 250 squared plus 2 times negative 9.8 times D. So I'm going to do is I'm going to move that 250 squared over to the left side. And when I do, it becomes negative. So that's negative 62,500 equals negative 19.6D. All I did was combine that 2 times negative 9.8. Now, please be careful with this. Divide both sides by negative 19.6. Do not add it. Just because you see that minus sign doesn't mean it's subtracting. That is multiplying times distance. So divide both sides by negative 19.6. And you're going to get a height of 3,188.78 meters. And it is okay to get bigger numbers in this because you're talking about an object that's going to 500 meters per second. So it is moving very quickly. So we've landed part C. Now we're going to do F, the range. So F, remember range is talking about horizontal distance. It's how far are you going horizontally. So remember horizontal, the only three things we care about are VX, DX, and T. So DX is what we're looking for. VX, make sure you use the right velocity. We found that in part A. That is the 433.01 meters per second. T is going to be your 51.02, so just make sure you're using the right time. If I'm talking about range, I could care less how far it is when it reaches the max height horizontally. It doesn't matter to me. I care about how far is it from launch to when it comes back on the ground. So you're going to use that total time. So VX equals DX over T. So 433.01 equals DX over 51.02. Okay, so multiply both sides by 51.02. And you're going to get 22,092.17 meters. Okay, and there's your answer, and that's pretty much the end of that page. Okay, so this is pretty much a blueprint of what we can ask as far as calculation-wise. So we're going to try some more practice. So again, if you want to pause the video, you can try it and then start it again. Kind of up to you on that one. So missiles fired at 1,200 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal. So I'm going to kind of draw it out. So my angle is 60 degrees. My hypotenuse is 1,200. <coughs> so A, find the time of the flight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and break it into pieces. So remember, I'm not even going to worry about what it's asking for yet. I'm going to go ahead and break that into pieces. So VX is going to be 1,200 times cosine of 60. Okay, again, make sure you're in degree mode whenever you do this stuff. Okay, so 1,200 times cosine of 60 is going to give you a nice 600 meters per second. Okay, VYI, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to use sine instead. And that's going to give me 1,039.23 meters per second. Now, that should logically make sense. If your angle is 60, that means you are more vertical than horizontal. So that means your VYI should be more than your VX, because if that angle is above 45, that means you're going higher rather than farther. Okay, so... That's why your velocity is so much higher in the vertical. Now, if you were below that 60 or below that 45 degree angle, you're going to start going more towards the VX side instead of the VYI side. So regardless, I always do these two things every single time because remember, I'm never going to use this 1200 again. Okay, so that one's done. So it says, A, find the time of the flight. So good thing is I already have my VYI. So remember T total equals VYI divided by 4.9. So I'm going to take that 1039.23 and divide it by 4.9, and you get 212.09 seconds. And that's it. That's all you got to do there. Part B says the range. Okay, so remember range is your horizontal distance, so DX is your question mark. So VX, we already know, 600. We got that. Okay, your T, we just found that, 212.09. So we're going to do that whole VX equals DX over T. So VX is 600 equals DX over 
212.09. So I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by the 212.09. And again, we're talking about a missile here, so you're going to get big numbers. So you're going to get a horizontal distance of 127,254 meters. And there's your answer right there. Okay, C, find the maximum height. So height is your vertical distance. So remember anything vertical, we're going to go ahead and set up our Daffy T. So D is your question mark. A is negative 9.8. Doesn't change there. So remember, VF is 0. Okay, VI. Okay, so VI, we know our VI is 1039.23. Okay, and that means we do not care about time. Again, could you use time? Yes, you could, but then you'd have to divide this 212.09 by 2. Okay, so just be careful with that. You can do that if you want to, just more prone to errors that way, more steps involved. So we're going to use that same equation we did in the last problem. VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. So VF is 0. VI is going to be that 1039.23, and that's squared, plus 2 times negative 9.8 times D. So I'm going to move that 1039 squared to the other side, and that's going to become a negative 1,079,999. And there's your, there's your other side. Okay, it's just a big number. And then you get negative 19.6D. Okay, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 9.6. You're going to get a distance of 55,102 meters. Okay, and that's going to end that video, and that's kind of just showing you the blueprints on how we can ask to solve things when we actually start calculating things. So we'll do more on the next video.